There we go, look at that lovely little handkerchief. Well, actually, it's not really a handkerchief. It could be a pocket square for um, one of my jackets. It would look quite nice in, in a top pocket like that. A little bit of linen, actually. I made some cravats. I wanted to experiment making my own cravats and I had a bit of material left over and I wanted to just test a few things because in this episode, I want to make some curtains, some gingham curtains for my kitchen. I've got three areas that I want to sort out. The main curtain, which I'm actually going to leave until I'm a bit more proficient because I think they've got to be lined because they'll actually be swishing curtains, i.e. they're going to shut. Curtain underneath the sink. A lot of people have suggested, why don't you have a nice little cottagey gingham curtain there? That's the one I'm going to make today. Um, along with one for my other window, which they're going to be fake. So there's going to be, I think, two different styles of curtaining going on. Here. Well, three in total, three different styles of curtaining in my kitchen. So I've got my old sewing machine, not my mother's sewing machine. I did get that down from the loft and try it. But um, the, although the motor worked, it didn't really turn and do anything. So that needs a real big old service. But this does seem to be working and I have managed to do a little bit of sewing on it. So that's great. The only thing is this has got at the moment some black thread on it and I need to really have some white thread because this is the gingham material that I'm going to be using for the curtaining and there's no black in it. So the black thread will stick out like a sore thumb, but there's white. So I've got some white thread somewhere and I need to change the bobbin, change the thing. Now, I'm no seamstress. I don't really know what I'm doing. So this could go horribly wrong. Um, but I've got three meters of this and I think that's going to be enough. So let's see how we get on, shall we? Right, that's the bobbin done. Wind the bobbin up. One, two, three. I can't remember the rest. Um, you'll have to look it up. Um, so, um, now I need to thank uh, the lovely Rachel, which Tim's better half, Tim Tricker, who I went camping with in recent videos. His better half, she does a little bit of sewing or quite a bit of sewing. She knows sewing. And Tim and Rachel popped round when I was struggling yesterday to understand quite how you wound the bobbin up and also get the tension right when I'm sewing. But um, we'll come on to that a bit later on. But big thanks to Rachel for that. Also, I, whilst I'm here, I want to also thank the lovely Jane Cox, who sent to me some fantastic material scissors and cotton cutters. We'll see those later on. But first, here am I um, where my curtain is going to go and at the moment all I've got is a hook here which has been hanging either dishcloths or tea towels or indeed what do you call these things oven gloves but that's um, it's not what I want really so I'm going to do these gingham um, curtains but I'm going to do them in a I think it's called like a cafe style a very simple style so that here's the material and I want to, it's very nice, isn't it? I love the color. It's going to hang like this, but right down to the bottom, but not flat like that. It's going to be gathered all the way along. So clearly I need more material than just that measurement. Um, so if I spread this out, we'll get a vague idea. I bought three meters of it. So I probably got far too much. And I also want to do those but I'm going to do the other windows separately as I said before so I think I need at least half as much again so whatever that measurement is I'm going to probably double it and then um, and half and, and then take half off if you see what I mean so probably that length plus 
that is what I'm thinking. And then by the time, or it might be, I just double it completely, see how that goes. And then by the time that's all gathered and hanging down, it should look quite nice. And I'm going to put um, a batten on here, um, or a, a curtain pole, which will actually be a piece of dowel. It will sit on and then be bolted on there and hang down. That's the theory. Just got to make it now. Okay, so let's clear the decks then. Let's get rid of this. Shove that down there for a moment. We're not going to need that. So I've measured the width up from the top of the sink. So here's the sink here. And that is, um, what is that, 20? That's 34. Let me just double check that. I'm sure that's 34. That's 23. That's 23 inches, right, okay. I have written them down in my little book over here. So that's 23 inches wide. I know that this is 44 inches wide. And I think that's gonna be enough actually, because 23 and 23 is 46. So that's pretty much double. And I think when that's all gathered together, that will be fine. So I need the height, which is 29 inches, to the ground plus a bit more because I want to hem all the way around first and then bend a bit more over. So I need to add a bit for that. Um, put a runner in and then gather it up together. That's kind of what it's gonna be. So as you know, I'm a complete rank amateur, but I'm giving it a go. We'll see how it goes. So I know this table, length of this table for my ease is 35. So I think, let's just move this out of the way. These are the scissors that Jane Cox bought me. Very lovely and very sharp and proper uh, scissors. So to help me measure, because um, this gingham, by the way, the checked sort of pattern is great for cutting because you can get a lovely straight line, which I really enjoy. So I know this is 34 from here to here. So I want to hem it, top and tail, where I'm gonna fold it over. And then I want to have a bit more as a runner, like that. And then I want 29 dropped to here, and then that hemmed over. So with all of that, if I cut this here, I know I've got plenty. And there's still plenty left to do the other curtains. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is having done that, I am going to cut along one of these lines with these scissors and that will keep give me a piece of material and we can measure it up again and make sure it works. Right, we don't need that. Actually, as it is, it makes a very lovely tablecloth. And of course, I think um, gingham is used as a tablecloth material. It's lovely. Right, let's get rid of that. Right, here we go. I have cut myself far too much. I'm just not wanting to cut too little and make a mistake. So I've actually cut more than I probably need. In actual fact, is that which is the width? I'm getting myself a bit confused here. <laughs> uh, I think this is, anyway, whichever way round it is, that's, that's right. So it, it, I've got it really long, much longer than I need it, as you can see here. Um, but it's going to be, let's just, now I'm not lining this because when this is in position, this is really, I've really cut this far too big, but never mind. Um, I've got lots of the material and it's quite cheap material. Um, it's going to be gathered, as I say, but when it's in there, it doesn't need to be lined because it's all, it's kind of, kind of be, you know, gathered up like this. So I, I'm hoping, to be honest with you, I have no idea whether this is going to work or not, whether this is just going to look a, a mess. But anyway, as long as I've got that about right. So the first thing I need to do is to hem 
at least the top and the two sides all the way round. I could just trim this to the right size so I'm not hemming too much because I can always trim the bottom and then hem it afterwards and then work out the fold thing and the rod so that it gathers up. You'll see what I mean. Well, I know this is vague and rather silly, but you'll see what I mean once I've got this organized. Right, so I have now trimmed this down and I have overturned the ends where I'm going to hem it. I, I know this is all a bit basic and, and you can't really see it, but I have actually sort of folded it and pinned it. So now this should be about the right height. Um, I'm going to quickly check that and then I think having pinned these, I will hem the two sides. I think that's what I'm going to do. And then the top and the bottom. And then we'll put it on a pole to see if it's about right. It might be too late then, but we'll, or I could do that first. Um, in fact, that's what I'm going to do first. So let's, let's just put that because I've folded it so it should fit on there. Sorry, this is all a bit cat. I've never done this before. And I know all the ladies doing this will think this is the most simplest thing. But when you're new and you haven't done anything like this, it's, um, it's all a bit of a mess. So I'm, again, I mean, thanks to Jane Cox who sent me the pins along with the scissors. Without that, I wouldn't be any good. And probably I should iron the, um, the crease to make that a bit sharper. So I may end up ironing that just before I stitch it. But let's just put it on a rod and see if it's about right. So once again, there's a lot of bending and fiddling here. I've got a rod here, which is just a piece of dowel, which I actually used as the runners on my plate rack. Um, so that's going to kind of go in there. I'm just going to use this hook actually to basically half position it, but it, it will be, it'll be higher, but it's going to be fitted there in some fashion. It needs to stand slightly proud. So I shall probably mount it on a little extra piece of dowel. So it's just proud of the thing. So that's going to run along there. And the material um, is going to now, where I hemmed it, let's see if I can just thread this through. I've hemmed, I haven't sewn it properly. I'm still only st uh, holding it by pins. So let's just thread this through and see if the principle works. So there it is. Hang on, we turn that around so it's the other way around. So in theory, and I hope I've got this right, I may not have got enough material. I'm going to pinch it and gather it like this. So that's really what it's going to look like. It's going to be hem that side, hem that side. And hmm, I've not, never really done this before. It kind of, maybe it needed more material. I'm not quite sure. But so how does that look? That's quite nice. And it's, it's, it's going to be fitted flush there like that. And that just hangs, actually that hangs quite well. Um, maybe I should have used a lot more material going that way just to bunch it up. But let's put this together, seeing as I've cut it out and see if we can't, I might be able to just live with that. That might, that might be all right. We'll try it. Right. We've got our trusty machine here that should all be working um, let's see if this is going to be okay I gather that the material makes a big difference to the um, the cotton and the stitching and the the tension and all of that so I'm just going to reduce that a little bit the size of the stitches and where am I hemming it? Actually, that's a good question. I'm not quite sure if I'm hemming it. I'm going to hem it down the end here. And then I guess I'll take the pins out as I go. Right. Let's see if I can get this to work. Oops. Can't 
can't get the bloody pedal in the right place. And actually, that's that's oh, I've already started that. Right. Let's see how this goes. Apparently what you do is you go forwards and backwards at the ends and then in theory, if I lift this up, that should be the knot and in these little things here, I've got these that Jane Cox very kindly uh, sent with it and you can trim the, the cotton. Right, and that is the first side done. That's the bottom I've actually just done, and that looks okay. That's amazing. <laughs> that looks okay. Wow, right, okay. So I'm gonna go and do all of the rest, and then we'll have a look and see if any of it fits. Gosh, that's a lot easier than I imagined it was going to be. But um, we're going to do the main hem down the sides. Yeah, I'll see you in a mo. It is some time later, and so I have I have a version to show you. Here it is. Look at that on the on the curtain rod, and it's going to go in there like that, and it's going to look absolutely fantastic and I'm just going to bunch it up a little bit so and it's just going to sit there and I think that's all right uh, in fact that was the uh, back end you saw there that's the front end like that so um, what have I done I realized that I had to seam up the sides hem up the sides first I had to do that otherwise if I did, did them last I wouldn't be able to thread this through because I would have basically stitched up the holes also I had the choice here of either just stitching along the fold and then the rod would be right at the top but actually what I wanted to do was to create this sort of I don't know what you call it bunched up feel with a little bit of tufty fluffy stuff at the at the at the top there so I basically did two um, lines and made a channel in which the, the curtain rod could go through and so that gives it this sort of tufty wufty thing it's amazing you know you start I love this because it's using a brain um, I started to think do you know I could make not only curtains but I could make my own cravats well I've tried that I could even make shirts and a waistcoat so I think I might start to do a little bit of tailoring and learn a few things like that probably not the easiest things I mean I've started with this this was easy because you've got these checkered marks you can get straight lines so easily right so the next task then is to fix that on there um, and just screw it on and it's done and that's brilliant and then these I've got a different idea for those I now have mock curtains here at the back not my best work I have to say having worked out how I would do it I think I may redo those at some later date because they're not quite right but it gave me some ideas on how to do the ones for the van, which I should be doing. And then down here, these, very good, very pleased, in position. And that looks all right. There's just one little bit down on the stitching that I got wrong. So not my best filming today with the shots and what have you, but giving you a vague idea. Um, yeah, I am enthused to do more. So... That grand as I say it's given me some great ideas for the van and that will be one of the topics that I will share with you in due course anyway in the meantime I hope you've enjoyed it if you would like to give me a thanks for providing some of the entertainment there is a thank you button 
uh, you can give a thumbs up as well and all of that. But there's a thank you button, which is very uh, useful, just helps pay for all the stuff. And of course, don't forget to follow, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I wish I could go over to these curtains here and draw them. But as you know, they're just pretend. Till next time, bye bye. Uh, draw, will they? They just won't draw.